I decided to redo a video that I've done for my custom uh, trailer here. It's a 7x12 extra tall. I've had quite a few hits on YouTube and quite a few comments on some of the mods, so I thought I'd use a better camera and then do an update video. I'm going to do this in one, one shot, so uh, if I talk like an idiot, it's because I am an idiot. I'm not going to edit, edit out any of that crap. So the first thing is I've already lost the screen, so here we go. On the top, most trailers come with the rubber pads uh, that are just screwed straight flat against it. Once the trailer is down on the ground, the angle of the pad doesn't match the angle of the ground. So I've taken some uh, square aluminum tube and then cut one side of it and then bent it down so when the door goes down, it makes the pads touch the ground at the correct angle. And then also, what it allows me to do is the extra height keeps the door, the metal trim, from getting banged up with all the rocks out here in Nevada. There's a lot of rocks whenever we go ride. So I've uh, had this trailer for a couple years now and I don't have really any dings on that top edge. Usually those get beat up pretty good. The other thing I did is I added an extension on the ramp that folds out because once you put those pads on there, the door's a little bit taller and the other ramp was a little bit too short. The hinge was having to bend too far, so I extended it. And then once I did that, I retensioned the springs to kind of zero balance the door so um, even a little kid could lift this door if they needed to. So I'll go ahead and put the door down. That's me not touching it. And it pretty much a little bit bang, but not too bad. There's the extension that I had to put on it. You can see the pad keeps it pretty good from the ground. So on the inside of the trailer, first thing I did before I ever used it um, is I went ahead and put a Sherwin-Williams. It's like called Treadplex. There's two different versions. Uh, the one on the floor, it's equivalent to kind of a two-part epoxy that you'd put on your garage floor on cement. It's a single paint, but it, it's designed to go on wood and it's high traffic area. So it stands up to pretty good abuse granted if you hit something hard enough to compress the damage the wood uh, you're still going to end up going through the paint but most of the scuff stuff and anything like that not getting any of it then on the walls i use a similar product um, it's not as uh, durable as the floor so it's not as expensive but i went ahead and painted it and then across the top i painted the white i still need to finish that I wasn't I hadn't decided if I wanted to paint the whole thing or not but I just wanted a little bit more um, reflection from light inside but if you have any questions on the paint a few people have asked I can provide it or you can just search some of the old comments but it, it works really well to keep the wood sealed from fluids or even to scuff stuff and it makes it pretty easy to to sweep it out because the wood doesn't really absorb any of the fine dust either so uh, what next? Let's just start on the wall over here. One of the things that I've done is, is uh, I think it's called Pit Posse. They sell these little mounts. Uh, I've used two of them and then I hang all my um, tie downs and everything. The way this trailer is configured, I can carry a side by side in here, a two seater, not a four seater. It's not long enough for that. Uh, I can carry, I have put three quads in here side by side. It is a pain in the ass, so typically two is what I'll deal with on the quads. I can go easily three motorcycles. If I needed to, I could go four, but the floor is set up for three. Then I've got all the tie downs associated with it. This is another product by Pit Posse. I'm not advertising for them. People just ask what the hell that stuff is. Um, it's a pop down shelf. It's pretty nice. It's got a lip on it, so it's sealed. So if you work on uh, any Thing with chemicals or anything like that and you're worried about it spilling everywhere if you put this down it'll uh, keep the liquid from going places also stop stuff from sliding off works pretty good can't complain uh got these bottle carriers had them for a long time round ones and then the rectangle ones this is the jack for the spare tire if i get a flat all it is is the drive on ramp and then the lug wrench one of the mods I've done since the first video, um, I've got these uh, one gallon gas jugs that go inside the side by side. And when I don't want them, I don't need them on the trail. I just mount them here on the wall and then it just holds the jugs there. If I, if I need them, I can get to them. Uh, this was a, a hole for this light. I ended up moving that light up there and then just plugging the hole. 
I've got a stupid little LED light there that if I need to, on, if it's not hooked up to any external power, I got a little bit of light. This bracket is something I put in after the fact. There's a, like an L bracket that I use to hold the gas jugs in the side by side. And whenever I don't have them in there, there's no reason for that bracket to stay in there. It's got a turn handle. So I just mount them right here. That way I have them. Got the fire extinguisher. The rest of the stuff on this wall. Uh, this piece here did extend all the way across. You can see I've got some um, markings on the door. That's where the side-by-side -side door opens. I have to squeeze between it and the wall. It's a fairly tight fit. So having this uh, aluminum running the full length, of course, it hit perfectly where the door was. So I had to cut it, and I just finished mounting a piece higher. What this one is for is on the second motorcycle. It uses it to hold it at the handlebars. Um, I'm going to eventually cut a hole inside here and recess this a little bit so the door opens a little bit more, and then I'll finish up where those screws used to be. Down below, uh, this is kind of, I, you could use it for tie down if you wanted to. Uh, I don't need to most of the time, but what I've done is, is if you look down that line, it keeps the tires, if for some strange reason I'm driving like a dipshit, which is most of the time, um, and I'm backing the side by side out, it prevents it prevents the tire from catching this edge because you most trailers have an edge where the door is. It just helps keep me um, in line. So when I'm doing the uh, uh, extra wide wheels and I don't have much room on either side, talking maybe an inch on either side, inch and a half at most, it just keeps me a little bit better when I'm backing out. Uh, moving around, this, these are little, the little stool seats. Uh, this plastic piece is comes with the stool seat anyway. It just coincidentally slides right inside this, uh, uh, I think it's sewer line that you can get at like Home Depot or Lowe's. I don't know what the inner diameter is, but I just drilled a hole through it and then drilled another hole and then ran a screw and mounted it. And then I just do these plastic fasteners that you'd use to hold plastic together. Like you, you know, quads have them. Um, vehicles have them. They're just those press and fasteners. And what it does is when this thing slides in, it hits it. But this makes it quick and easy to get the seats out. They've never moved. Um, I don't want to say I'm lazy, but at times I, I guess I could be lazy. But the main thing is, is I like functional and I like simplicity. And if I'm going to be getting a seat out a lot and putting it away a lot, I don't want to have to do 18 different straps and open 13 different doors. I just want to be able to lift it out and then slide it back in. And once again, there we go. So it makes it pretty simple. Um, moving around, the other thing is when we get to the front of the vehicle, I put a pass-through electrical plug. Uh, this allows me, if I need to put a battery tender or even use power tools inside here if I'm doing some additional mods, I can just run electrical cord to that and then I've got power inside. Uh, it keep, allows me to keep the doors closed. Uh, on the front wall here, most of these trailers on the front, especially on this one, it's super weak. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of wood, I've cut a groove in it, a notch in it, so it gives it the ability to bend a little bit better, and I've mounted to the front. So that helps when the side-by-side, -side, mainly the quad, um, hits the front. I'm not just busting through the wall. The other thing I've done in the front, these rubber bumpers are where the front bumper on the side-by-side -side comes in contact with. So I'll run it all the way up against here, and then I'll use a tie down on the floor through that one right there, through the front bumper to keep the front end from climbing. Because when I pull the side-by-side -side in, I'll run it against these wheel chocks, which gives me the exact distance where I need to the front. But if I was to slam on the brakes on the truck, the side-by-side is going to want to climb up the wheel chocks, which means the bumper is going to kind of want to go up, which means it's going to be riding high. So I use a tie down to keep the bumper exactly level here. The only thing that will happen is the suspension will compress, and that will help keep the the side-by-side uh, -side from rolling forward if I have to slam on the brakes. Uh, um, well, if you're wondering what this little piece is, I had it from initially using it, and uh, when I made the stuff bigger, I just ran it across the top. Gives me a place to high, hang the tie down whenever I'm going to be wrapping around the front bumper. It just makes it a little bit easier. But it was more I just had the wood left over, and I said put it on. Also added one of the atomic clocks in here. It's temperature inside the trailer. It's 108.5, so it's a little bit cooler in here than normal. Uh, we're still not in the heat of the day yet. This is another product, like I said, I'm not advertising for them. They just seem to be carrying the stuff that I need from Pit Posse. Uh, cabinet, 
that uh, I mounted on the wall. I catched, of course, the, the studs inside. The one thing that I had to do is, of course, this cabinet was gonna go right where the vent, the upper vent is to let the trailer breathe. The other vent to let the trailer breathe is right back there. So I had to notch around it a little bit. But I didn't want this vent plugged, so I went ahead and used uh, uh, plumber stuff again. Got a 90 degree elbow, put it up against the vent, and then run it down through the cabinet. So the intake isn't as high, it's not that big of a deal, but I still have the ability to move air through here when it's just parked. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this. So, not the Easy Up. I've got the Easy Up canopy, and then above that I've got two chairs. Uh, they're full up chairs, lounger chairs, you know, the cup holders and all that other crap. Uh, once again, like I said, I, I like stuff to be simple and easy. I don't have to go through 8,000 things. Since I put the side-by-side -side in here, the area that you would say from about um, five feet and below, you really don't have the option to have it poke out very much because you need to get it closer to the height of the roof line where the roof kind of comes in a little bit so you have a little bit more width. So most of everything I carry, I've got to carry up high just so the side-by-side -side doesn't run into it. So what I've done, this is all scrap metal. This is a one inch tubing. And I get a lot of questions on this and I used one inch tubing that goes up and just made an L bracket. And then inside the one inch tubing, I drilled a hole on one side and a small hole on the other side. So I could run a screw through the vertical one, the upright one and mount it into the main support where you can see one of the screws there. Then the other thing I did is inside here, I've got a spring old spring I had and I used round tube here and then used a piece of angle iron on the round tube which stops this tube from moving left and right and then what I can do is I'm going to try and do this one handed we'll see if I can but you can see there's the angle iron that's welded onto it I just rotate that around and then it's out of the way and then do the other one and that thing slides right off slides right on and then when I'm ready to put it back I just do that. Now, since the pressure is on the rod up higher, this rod's never gonna slide out. I don't care. You probably could get in an accident, the trailer probably disintegrate, and this thing would probably still be together. Because one, the spring's fairly stout. It's not like super weak. But just the way the pressure friction is, it's just not gonna go. The chairs, uh, when I decided to do the chairs, I had to add some extra height to this bar. So I just took a, some scrap steel and just added it on. The chairs, I can just lift up over top. I don't have to move the bars. The bars I would move when I need to get the easy up down. Back here, I put the spare tire. Part of the reason I put the spare tire, this is the dual axle trailer. Um, the, uh, the balance, the tongue weight is probably, um, I don't wanna say abnormally high, but the, the, the design of all these trailers typically is you're gonna have naturally more weight on the tongue than on the back. It makes it so people really can't they could, but it makes it difficult to put too much weight on the back to where you really lighten up the tongue weight. You end up usually with too much tongue weight. So anything that had any decent weight to it, i.e. all these straps, uh, they do create quite a bit of weight. Individually, not too bad, but when you start adding, you know, 20 of them back there, there's a little bit more weight. Put the tire to the back. Uh, what it is, is I had questions about this. It's just a flat piece of metal that has a rod bolt that is welded to the metal, and then it is set up to go through two of the lug nut holes, and then the flat plate is mounted to one of the main uprights. Uh, works pretty good. Every once in a while, you gotta check the lug nuts because they will loosen up because they're just, you don't, yeah, the hand tight will keep it pretty good, but usually a little bit more. So, uh, okay. The other thing I've done is in each one of the corners, I'm gonna go up to the front. All the corners have it. There's this strip. I think I got it from a uh, e-trailer. I'm not sure, but I mounted it. These things have the quick little spring to press where you rotate it and you can slide it and you can put it anywhere. They're pretty strong. They could hold quite a bit. Uh, I just do it more to keep things if I have something that I don't want flopping around. Uh, I won't use it to hold in any bikes or anything like that, but if I just got something standing up or if I've got cargo crap that I'm gonna use other than bikes, since I have one of these in each corner, I can set it up, you know, tie ropes around, whatever, and it'll do a pretty good job to hold it. The other thing I did, uh, let's go down here, is for the motorcycles. Uh, got a couple questions on these. Uh, they work pretty good, but they're in floor. You cut a hole through your floor, and then you uh, mount them in the floor, obvious. Flips up. Your front tire goes here. 
Um, for a 21 inch dirt bike tire, it probably doesn't fit down inside uh, as well as this is probably made for a uh, street bike tire, maybe, I'm not sure, but uh, works well enough. Uh, if it was customized for a street bike or a, a dirt bike tire, you could probably knock out a good third of the width on this thing and just keep the overall width just for the front tire. But uh, they uh, flop down, I got three of them. They're offset, uh, so I can put three bikes in here easily. The strips on the side, like I said before, is where I used to hold the handlebars to hold the bike up against the wall, towards the wall the other side. Oh, I forgot to talk about this. So this one, e-trailer I picked up, it's pretty nice. You just lift it up and it latches. Uh, once it latches, stays there, of course. Um, mounts into the verts, it's set up for the verts. It's just got two quick releases on the bottom. You just push those, well, you should do it. I'm gonna put them. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it up. You need two hands. You need one hand on one and one on the other, and then it slides right back down. So uh, let me try it again. I'm gonna try and just push one side down afterwards and put my knee on it and see if I can do the other side. There we go. So quick, simple, put away. Other side, like I said, here's the uh, tr uh, track that keeps me from smacking the tires. Uh, these are the factory little hold down things. I left them on. Uh, I think. Two of them I relocated, but you never know if you need a tie down or not. Just didn't feel like throwing them away. So in the ground, I went ahead and ordered these. Um, I made a mistake when I ordered them because I ordered uh, 6K ones, which is a little bit overkill. But what I had already had them. I said, well, screw it. So I went ahead and mounted, um, what was it, three, eight of them in here. And... The nose one I use to hold the side-by-side -side nose down. The side ones I use when I'm in for holding in quads. The railing on the side, sometimes on the ground, I'll use for the dirt bikes. And then in the back, the back two off to the side are mainly used for holding the side-by-side. -side. Keeps it, uh, I'm don't not worried about it going front to rear. Um, I use a strap to hold it towards the front. E even accelerating hard, it's not like it's gonna slide around in here. But I do drive aggressively through canyons, uh, so I do hold it from left to right, just so it doesn't shift, so I don't open up the trailer door and then go, oh, look at that, it shifted to one side, and now it's gonna be a pain in the ass to get out. Uh, that has worked really well over the years. Haven't had any problems with it. Uh, neighbor's dog decided doesn't like it. Oh, another new mod. So on the side by side, uh, depending on where you go, you'll need a whip antenna. So once again, uh, Home Depot or Lowe's uh, plumber material, I went ahead and this cap, you can see that cap, that cap twists off and then you can slide the whip antenna out. The one I have is a Tusk, not advertising for them, it's a Tusk through Rocky Mountain ATV that's an LED strip. So it's just not a, a, a simple little, you know, um, rod. It's a little bit more complex uh, as far as the overall diameter. So I went ahead and I just slide it in there. Um, I put, I don't want to take it out, but what I've done is, is I put some foam donuts around the whip. So the LED has that protective uh, clear plastic coating on the outside. I put four donuts that just slide onto it. So when I slide it inside the tube, the LED isn't flapping around inside the tube and getting all scuffed up and then once i slide it out i just leave the donuts you know somewhere in here works pretty good so let me walk around to the front and give you a little bit more uh dual axe like i said get tire cover so on the front um got a couple questions on this not a lot but a few so one of the things that i've done this is the stock location for your uh screw jack your lift jack whatever the hell you want to call it tongue jack uh if if you have that and you hooked it to a vehicle tailgate ain't coming down so i went ahead and put in a bar that uh crosses over just a second i'm gonna pause this okay i'm back what i was talking about if you have it mounted here you're not putting the tailgate down when the trailer's hooked up and it drives me nuts so i went ahead and got uh some uh, rectangle tubing it's probably stronger than it needs to be but that's okay and went ahead cut it and welded it in uh, amateur welder, but I did that all myself and it's a power jack so it works pretty good So now when the trailers hooked up I have no problem putting the tailgate down even if the trailers at an angle the other thing I did is uh, I built a little box that goes between the it's obvious goes between the front of the trailer and the jack here it holds 
easily two of the five gallon jugs you just slide them in one of the reasons why i did that is if i need gas or i want to carry gas i don't have to have it inside and if i'm stopping to fill up the jugs i don't need to open up doors or any other crap which makes it nice because sometimes when you pull in places you can't even get the door open on the side unless you open it before you pull forward so it gives me the ability to carry two of those i can actually do a third one in here in the center uh, it's not like super tight fit. You just it's just not in and out as easy So it'd be something that in it when I need to do 15 gallons plus I can do it. No problem Here's the uh, inlet on my first video. I said this is on the uh, driver's side. It's obviously not it's on the uh, passenger side doesn't really matter, but that's where it comes in uh, the battery box most trailers with brakes have the battery box. Uh, one of the things that I've done with it is I bought a motorcycle lithium battery. And, uh, and i got to fix the trim on that. I bought a motorcycle lithium battery. Uh, one, because it, it, it just lasts longer and it's stronger. And I just got sick and tired of the, they just It's just a shitty battery they put in there and they go bad pretty quick. Well, one of the major things that I did... And since, like I said, some people say, this is not a 7x12 trailer. It is a 7x12 trailer, in fact. Um, and it's extra height. So it's a flat nose, extra height. And uh, even though I have a shell on my truck and a diesel engine with uh, quite a bit of torque and horsepower, it still has got a drag coefficient through the roof when you get uh, up above 70 miles an hour. And I usually drive well above that most of the time so one of the things that i did is i got uh not advertising for them but through nose cone um, i worked out the angle on this uh, sent them a custom template on it and then they pre-cut the angle because it has a slight curvature to the front of the trailer it's not exactly flat of course if it was exactly flat it would have been perfect but no it had to have just this slight curvature so i went ahead and added this up towards the top um, ever since i put that on huge difference I mean, before when I'd be going up even the minor, minor grades uh, at 80, 85, it would come out of overdrive to do it. And I'd be sitting pretty much up in the boost. Now with this on, it doesn't come out of overdrive at all. Really no boost. It just made a huge difference when I'm towing it. Let me see if there's anything else that I need to cover. The only thing I have thought about doing is towards the top of the cabinet is there's some space there. I like to optimize space. And I'm thinking about creating a, an aluminum... Um, trim around the top of it and then just pop riveting it down so i might even just do a spot weld on it to hold it that way i can throw stuff on top and it won't slide off but it gives me a place just to store stuff i.e uh this siphon pump that would be perfect for throwing up there and a few other odds and ends so this is a quick update and uh, i did the video yesterday and i was talking about putting a trim on top of this cabinet to be able to store additional stuff up there get it out of the cabinet so this morning i decided Go ahead and see what type of scrap material I had and went ahead and put a trim around the top of the cabinet all the way around so nothing can fall down the back side, down inside the wall. And then I laid the uh, kind of like that non-slip rubber matting, the thin stuff that you find in toolboxes and sometimes in the kitchen. I cut a piece and put that in the bottom. What I have in the top side is I have two small tables that go with the uh, chairs that are sitting there. Um, they were sitting inside the cabinet. Now they just sit up top. Makes it pretty nice. I've also got the wheel chocks that if I need to, um, you know, have wheel chocks for the trailer if I'm disconnected and just don't want it rolling around. And then I also have up in there the uh, lock for the, uh, the, the tongue area. You know, the one that goes inside where the ball is and then you lock it around so it makes it a little bit harder for someone to steal the trailer. So I think that about covers it. If you guys have any questions uh, on the mods, uh, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll go ahead and reply. You guys have a good one.